All right, guys, are you serious? Are you serious? Just making sure we're live here. Uh, give me just one moment here. I think everything is fine. I know it's got to be sometime in the middle of the night. Uh, it's 10, 10 a.m. here in Tel Aviv, Israel. So that means it must be uh, 9, 8, 7, 6, what is it? 2 in the morning? What? Yeah, or 3, maybe 3, 8, 3, 10. What time is it? Good to see Mike Smith. Mike, what? Um... Uh, is that the Mike Smith that went to Israel with me last year? Just to make sure, is there several Mike? 310. Okay, thank you. Susie Q's in here and Zachary. What are you guys doing awake? Are you serious? Oh, it's good to see everybody. Thundercat. Okay, thank you, guys. Uh, just want to break in here, try to get caught up on everything going on. Of course, the tour, uh, the Paul Begley tour, uh, just concluded. Um, and everybody is on the planes headed back to America. Some are probably going to be touching down soon in three or four hours. And uh, But, of course, we continue on. We have uh, a lot of filming to do for television and some interviews and meetings. So we'll be going on for a few more days. Uh, it's cold, I heard. Yes, it is very cold out there. Six, six states are facing some serious weather issues, okay? No doubt about that. Let me put a shout out real fast, goes guys, real quick here to uh, to rate family, ratefamily.com. Uh, you don't want to let your family pay for your final expenses. Death in the family can be hard, and unfortunately, we all have to deal with this sooner or later. But all of us leave behind final expenses, such as funeral costs, medical bills, other debts. In fact, the average funeral alone is between eight and nine thousand dollars. So having no insurance when you die can leave your family, your loved ones, uh, really with a huge bill to deal with, and nobody wants to do that. So take control of your family's destiny today. Have the satisfaction that they will be financially taken care of. Visit www.ratefamily.com and get a free quote. Matter of fact, you can select the best plan to fit for your needs and budget. Burial expenses is very easy to budget for you and can even you can even choose how and how often to make the payments some members pay as low as thirty six dollars a month it's due to your income level but visit go right now to www.ratefamily.com that's www.ratefamily.com or call them today at 855-919-RATE that's 855-919-RATE you'll be glad you did all right so here's what's going on, guys. Good to see everybody out there. Able to go live today. Got, I've got enough. I miss you guys, too. Okay, I miss you. I know you guys miss me, and I totally miss you guys. And uh, so uh, we got a good internet connection here. I'm in Tel Aviv. I'll be in Jerusalem later today, and I'll broadcast again later tonight, which will be your daytime sometime or another, uh, from Jerusalem, hopefully with a good internet connection there. So anyway, I ran into a lot of folks here. We've run into a lot of people here in Israel. It's been a, a, an exciting time. A lot going on, okay? I want to share with you real quickly, though, the situation uh, that's taking place uh, in Mexico. But before I do, I really want to discuss the top subject here. We've found out that there, there's some uh, a new report has just been released on the dangerous, the most dangerous fault lines in America. What? <clears throat> Um, here's what we got. Um, what are the most dangerous fault lines in the United States? Well, there are many seismically active fault zones across the United States, and some still have to be discovered. But here is the present list of the most dangerous fault lines in the United States. Now, if you looked at my thumbnail before I went live, and you could check that later, you'll see they're highlighted in pink being the hottest and then red, and then orange, yellow, green, blue, and white, okay? And right now, there's no doubt about it, New Madrid fault line is in pink and is the one of the most dangerous locations. So is Cascadia uh, fault line, the Cascadia subduction zone up there in Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. So is Southern California and the San Andrea fault line. So is the Big Island in Hawaii. Very dangerous location there. 
and so is the southern coastline of Alaska. Also, South Carolina, right down there near the coast, is a very dangerous fault line that has got uh, a lot of people concerned. Now, there's a lot of faults <coughs> throughout the country, but if you're living in St. Louis or, or uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, or Memphis, Tennessee, up and down in that area there, you're in a very dangerous zone. Uh, here's the number one they say is Cascadian. That's, I'm not shocked by that because that's what the Lord showed me. And I said that six months ago. Matter of fact, Steve, Steve Quayle heard me say it, a report on it, and even invited me to come and be a part of a panel at the end of his conference, um, the last phase of the conference last year, or this year, I should say, in Branson, Missouri. And uh, the Cascadia subduction zone in the Pacific Northwest is considered the number one most dangerous fault line in America. By the time Lewis and Clark arrived there in the West Coast back in 1805, it had been 105 years since the Cascadia subduction zone had last ruptured, sending a large portion of the Pacific Ocean roaring toward the coast. Now, the few remaining Native Americans in the area spoke of the earth shaking and the ocean rising to consume the land. Many tribes even left the region permanently. However, it wasn't until the discovery of the Cascadia fault line in the 1960s that modern settlers truly understood the dangers that they faced. And it was in the year 1700 that a massive earthquake of 9.1 uh, destroyed uh, a massive amount of trees and, and everything in its path from um, <clears throat> southern Vancouver, Canada, all the way down to northern California. Running 680 miles along the Pacific North coastline. The Cascadia Fault directly threatens three major metropolitan areas, Portland, Oregon, Seattle, Washington, and Vancouver, Canada. With Cascadia capable of producing a magnitude 9.0, the Pacific Northwest may soon be facing shaking 16 times more powerful than San Francisco's devastating earthquake of 1906. What? Are you serious? lasting four minutes, delivering a mighty tsunami of unimaginable proportions. Number two most dangerous fault line in America is the New Madrid Seismic Zone. That's Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Illinois, even a little bit of Indiana. The New Madrid Seismic Zone spans southeastern Missouri, northeastern Arkansas, western Tennessee, western Kentucky, and the southern portion of Illinois. It's the most active earthquake zone east of the Rocky Mountains. Between 1811 and 1812, there were two massive earthquakes in both years. The zone experienced some of the largest quakes in history. And although they originated in the Mississippi Valley, they rang the church bells in Boston and shook the city of New York over a thousand miles away. Even President James Madison and his wife, Dolly, reportedly felt the shaking of it at the White House. Now, after one particularly large rupture in the fault, the mighty Mississippi was forced to run backward for several hours, devastating acres of forest and creating two temporary waterfalls. And fortunately, the Mississippi Valley was sparsely populated back in those days, but today millions of people live there in the densely populated urban areas like St. Louis and Memphis, Tennessee, making this zone one of the biggest concerns for the Federal Emergency Management Agency. And so we will be doing a conference next year in early May on The Earth is Shaking, The Heavens Are Quaking. It's part two of that series we started last year in Cincinnati where we focused on the signs in the heavens in Nibiru or Planet X and what's causing the, the heavens to shake. Well, it's going to cause the earth to quake, and that's going to be the focus of our next conference coming up. Soon we'll be announcing that date and location. You can start getting tickets. You want to hurry because they will be the very limited seating. Now, number three, the Ramapo Seismic Zone in Pennsylvania and New Jersey and New York is number three, and nobody talks about this one, but in 1884, Brooklyn was rattled by an earthquake originating near the Ramapo Fault System. Toppling chimneys in New York City, felt as far away as Maine and Virginia, 
<coughs> the magnitude 5.2 earthquake was a sudden wake-up call for settlers in the region. Running through Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, the Ramapo has remained quiet for about 200 years. It is way overdue. So is Cascadia and so is Madrid. All three of them are way overdue. Okay? And so uh, <clears throat> it's a mid-magnitude earthquake. Right place could cause devastating damage. One of the faults in the Ramapo system even crosses New York City around 125th Street in the middle of the city. A magnitude 5.0 rupture last, lasting more than two minutes could cause intense structural damages to numerous Manhattan skyscrapers, most of which are not designed. I repeat, not designed to withstand a tectonic activity. And that would include the Empire State Building. Something to keep an eye on, guys, if, if you're thinking about that. <coughs> Excuse me. Got a little bit of dust. We were at the uh, Mediterranean Sea yesterday at the in Caesarea. Got a little bit of dust. Uh, the wind was blowing extremely strong yesterday. We went on top of Mount, Mount Carmel where Elijah called down the fire. And there was a very strong east wind. Very rare. The wind blows from the west coming from the Mediterranean. But right now here in Israel, all day yesterday was a very unusual, very rare, strong east wind. And uh, it was turning the sky over Megiddo very hazy, extremely hazy with dust coming from the east. So there was something different going on. And I've been thinking about the prophecy, the dream that Rhonda Epstein had that when Paul Begley is in Israel, something's going to begin. <clears throat> I'm not sure, you know, I talked to her even before I left. Not sure what in the world it could be. But for some reason, this strong east wind blowing across Armageddon yesterday, and then, you know, uh, was strange, okay? Strange, to say the least. The tour guides uh, and different people were all chatting about this because it's something they had never seen before. Not that there hasn't been strong east winds before, but <clears throat> it is a very rare event. And when it had happened while I'm standing on Mount Carmel overlooking the valley of Armageddon or Megiddo. Now, we went to Megiddo also, and the wind continued to blow very strong across the valley of Armageddon. Something to think about. Uh, let me just go on here. There's some more fault line situation. I'm so, so I'm so glad you guys are on my backup channel in at 3 o'clock in the morning. I can't even believe anybody be here, but uh, I had such a good, <coughs> a good connection. I thought... Let's go live. If anything, the people will be able to watch it on the uh, archive. That is crazy, Paul. Thank you for that. And and I'm thinking about that a lot. And, and I don't know if that's part of the Harbinger, if this is a Harbinger uh, event. Um, I don't know. We, I was going to record when I was up there, but the wind was so strong that you would not even have been able to hear the... Uh, you couldn't have heard me talk up there. That's how strong the wind was. Quite uh, very strange. Um, number four, the Hayward Fault in California. This very unstable fault in California has been threatening the San Francisco Bay Area for generations. <clears throat> it's capable of producing quakes <clears throat> ranging from 7.0 to 8.0 magnitude. The last major movement along the Hayward Fault occurred on October 21st, 1868, virtually destroying downtown Hayward, California. So this thing is way overdue. In fact, it was considered the great earthquake until the San Andrea Fault tore San Francisco apart 38 years later. Now running for nearly 74 miles through the cities including Fremont, California, Hayward, Oakland, Berkeley, Richmond, the Hayward Fault has the potential to wreck more havoc than most California faults because of the population. Over 2.4 million people live within close proximity to this fault line today. It's not, not to mention the key infrastructure developments, including a major public transit system uh, and, and the Cattle Scott Tunnel that runs precisely through the fault. Something to consider, folks, when you're traveling. And then number five, the Denali Fault System in Alaska. 
Uh, if we were talking sheer magnitude, the largest recorded earthquake in North American soil hit on November 3rd, 2002 in Alaska, starting at the Sosna Glacier Thrust Fault. The rupture raced along the Denali Fault System, continued 220 kilometers until it reached uh, the Tatsushuna Shunda Fault Line, rattling 70 more kilometers. <clears throat> now, in a video back in 1964, Alaskan earthquake, also known as the Great Alaskan Earthquake, it was on Good Friday, which occurred at 5.36 p.m. their local time. On Good Friday, this earthquake hit on March 27, 1964. There is footage of it. It was a massive uh, earthquake estimated at around 8.5 and uh, bringing massive uh, tsunami. The number six fault line to watch is San Andrea Fault Line in California. California sits right on the border between the two major tectonic plates. This Pacific plate, which is moving northwest and North American plate, which is sliding past it to the southeast. These two plates don't just meet at a single line. The state is crisscrossed with dozens of earthquake faults, and San Andreas is the most worrisome because it generates the quakes that are really dangerous to California residents. But the fault indeed slices California in two from Cape Mendocino to the Mexican border, and San Diego... Los Angeles and the Big Sur are on the Pacific Plate, while San Francisco, Sacramento, and the Sierra Nevada are all on the North American Plate. <clears throat> now, while San Andreas does not go through San Francisco, it crosses the Desert Hot Springs, San Bernardino, Wrightwood, California, Palmdale, Gorman, Fraser Park, Daly City, Point Reeves Station, and Bogiga Bay. That's, a, that's just a few other million people. Then in northern San Andrea fault line, it leveled San Francisco back in 1906, but it, it isn't been a lot stronger longer since the southern part of the fault rupture. So on an average, South, uh, Southern California has about 110 to 140 years based on records of past earthquakes. Uh, major quakes will hit. The last big quake to hit Los Angeles was a 7.9. It struck Fort Tijon in 1857 and further south near Palm Springs. The fault hasn't ruptured in 300 years. It is ready to break. Guys, these are just some of the major quakes that uh, the top five of the ten most dangerous, <clears throat> that are all overdue, all overdue. And so when you start thinking about the impact of Nibiru, planet X, planet number nine, the five waves of energy, the prophecies that Jesus said, the heavens, he said, in the last days there will be signs in the sun and in the moon <clears throat> and in the stars and the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves will be roaring, and men's hearts will fail them for fear, for looking after those things coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall they see the Son of Man coming with the cloud, and power with great glories. When all these things begin to come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your head, for your redemption is drawing nigh. Now, one of the reasons that we continue to bring forth to you the apocalyptic watch, of the understanding of the last days, is because Jesus' prophecies throughout the entire Bible was of his coming. And not only was it prophesied by Old Testament prophets like Joel and Zechariah and um, um, Isaiah and Daniel. And, you know, even my new two DVD series called Isaiah's Apocalypse really shows you how to really understand the prophecies of Isaiah and the, and the significance to the events that are coming. Uh, we're living in the end times. We're living in the last days. And I've got meetings coming up this week that I hope to get some answers for you. I've got uh, <clears throat> three prominent meetings with Bible scholars, both 
Christian, uh, one, a famous, very famous Christian the eschatology theologist, and two of them with uh, uh, rabbis, and one which also is gifted in eschatology. So, look, there's a lot going on. The other one's an archaeologist. He's a rabbi, but he's an archaeologist. So, we're going we're gonna to be finding out some things for you that we'll be bringing for you in the next few weeks to come from those meetings. And a couple of things I'm, I'm going to be asking in these questions is, you know, <clears throat> I've, I noticed a lot of things this past week. Now, this is the fourth Paul Begley tour, okay? And it's the fifth tour I've taken. I took one with Dr. Lester Summerall, my first one, and this is my fourth Paul Begley prophecy tour. And so, and this is my 10th time to Israel. So you have to understand, I have <clears throat> been watching very close everything that goes on here. New highways, new train stations, new infrastructures, uh, attitudes of the people, both uh, uh, that includes Muslims, Jews, and Christians, and tourists, and tourism, and the numbers of people coming. And I see major changes taking place here. And it's kind of amazing because if I think the people who live here are not even really aware of the changes that are happening right under their eyes. And because they're so used to just living here, sort of like living in America. And if somebody comes once a year to a certain area and studies it, they'll see the adaptation of things taking place. So there's some serious, and I don't mean this in a negative way, There's because some of this is really good stuff. <clears throat> some of it it's good to see, actually. But at the same time, then as I'm seeing it, I'm realizing, okay, for instance, this is the safest I've ever felt here. Tenth time to Israel, the safest I've ever felt. And part of it has to do with the attitude out on the ground, okay? Um, has a lot to do with it. And, yeah, and that's even with ten rockets flying out of Gaza into southern Israel. Nothing near where we're at. But I'm just saying, there's a spirit, there's a total different calm. Something totally different, okay? I want to talk more about that when I, uh, yes, I'm still in Israel. Thank you so much, Roxy. Uh, and so there's a lot we're going to learn in the times to come. Now, let me talk about this Mexican family that was just butchered or slaughtered or murdered in Mexico. It's a, out of Utah, a beautiful family out of Utah, a Mormon family <coughs> who were gunned down. Three women, three, three mothers killed, six children killed, some of the other children wounded uh, and, and surviving in surgeries. Uh, just a horrible thing. And I sometimes wonder about this because President Trump tweeted, very upset. Matter of fact, let me just read this for you. Um, President Trump tweeted these words. A wonderful family and friends from Utah got caught between two vicious drug cartels who were shooting at each other, with the result being many great American people killed, including young children, and some are even missing. If Mexico needs or requests help in cleaning out these monsters, uh, the United States stands ready, willing, and able to get involved and do the job quickly and effectively. The great new president of Mexico has made this a big issue, but the cartels have become so large and powerful that you sometimes need an army to defeat an army, okay? Uh, this is the time for Mexico, with the help of the United States, to wage a war on the drug cartels and wipe them off the face of the earth. We merely await a call from your great new president. Now, folks, if you read between the lines, the president of the United States is saying, I want to clean this nest out. Mr. And he's saying basically to the Mexican president, pick up the phone and call me. I'm ready to come in there. But if the Mexican president doesn't call and ask for help, what does the president do then? Does he go in anyway and just tell Mexico, I'm on my way? Uh, or, does, you know, or what does he do? Because, and I'm sure without a doubt, as I'm sitting here talking to you folks live from Tel Aviv, Israel, I can promise you, the President of the United States has already been on the phone with the President of Mexico, 
And I can tell you that the president of Mexico is already talking to the heads of the drug lords, the drug cartels. And I can tell you that the Mormon church, because these folks were Mormons, have already been knocking the door down at the White House. And there's, and there's a lot of negotiation going on right now. And I, I, I'm telling you, it will have implications as we go forward in the next few months. So keep an eye on this story, okay? Keep an eye on this and other situations. Um, so there's a lot going on in that situation. Now, there's other things taking place as well I think it's important to bring up. Uh, and one would be, if you give me just a second here, I will find the uh, report I have here. Glad I got, I actually got an, an internet system that's really working good. I would wake Brock up and go live through the Salvation Station through everybody, but it's 3 o'clock in the morning, so I'm not going to do that to him. Um, <clears throat> okay. The enrichment of the uranium, I talked about that last night. I did a video last night uh, on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can watch that. Also, this uh, strange situation about the ABC anchor admitting that ABC News knew about Jeffrey Epstein and had pictures and everything, and they never reported this. They just sat on this for four years. I find this a stunning, stunning report. Now, I don't know. It's it's ABC News, uh, and ABC News has responded now to the Veritas Project video, saying at the time, not all of our reporting met our standards to air the story, but we've never stopped investigating the story. Oh, I know. Since when did? <coughs> can I ask ABC News a question? <coughs> Since when does a news agency like ABC News and these other guys? Set on a story four years, waiting to fully investigate it. They ran, they and others ran with the hoax of the Russian collusion before it could barely be uttered. It was a, it, it, before Peter Strzok could barely tweet it to his lover, Lisa Page. Then every news agency in America was running with a story that was totally fake, made up. Uh, and, and we spent $42 million dollars. Uh, investigating in Congress and wasting two and a half years of America's time. I mean, are you serious? But ABC News couldn't run with this story. <clears throat> oh, no. Because he was a powerful pedophile. But anyway, ABC News says, look, we knew about it at the time, but it didn't meet our standards. But we have never stopped investigating the story. And ever since, we've had a team on this investigation, substantial resources dedicated to it. The work has led to two-hour documentary and a six-part podcast that will air next year. Oh, okay. Now that now that the beans are spilled, you're going to have to come up with a six-part podcast next year. Why not launch it now? But anyway, Robach uh, added a, in a statement. That's the leader of ABC. I I was caught in a. Oh, I mean, that was the uh, anchor of ABC. I was caught in a private moment of frustration. I was upset that an important interview I had conducted with Virginia Roberts didn't air because we could not obtain sufficient collaborating evidence. Um, uh, but somehow the Miami Herald got the job done and did it anyway. Now, so this is a, this is a big story. I'm, you look, she's, she's upset because, you know, this puts her in jeopardy, of course. But uh, ABC News is upset because this really makes them look pretty bad because we find out, <clears throat> you know, that the people that were at this supposable meeting took place was a lot of powerful people, including, you know, Prince, Prince Andrew was there and Bill Clinton was there and, and George Stapanopoulos and other people. So, look, I, I don't know anything about the story, but I think it was pretty big and the fact that... Uh, ABC News knew all about it. This guy had already went to prison for 13 months uh, for molesting children, and they let him loose, and he throws a big party, and all these powerful people attend, and, and I don't know what, what went on at the party. I wasn't there. I have no idea. Uh, I can only just tell you that uh, the information that came out everywhere was it wasn't a, was a bad thing. So I'm telling the truth. I'm telling the truth, and I'm just telling, telling you what's out there. Not, not going to 
speculate. I'm not going to give any commentary to it. I just tell you what's out there. Okay? You do the you do the calculation on that one. Oh, let me tell you what else is going on, though. The uh, California people are leaving the state of California in droves. And I mean droves. A report has just come out that conservatives, people who are Christian conservatives, are leaving the state of California in droves because of the America First law and order. Um, California conservatives are leaving the state in droves over what the LA Times describes as a disenchantment with the deep blue California liberal political culture. Not to mention high taxes, that's part of it. Lukewarm support for local law enforcement, that's part of it. And policies they believe have thrown open the doors to illegal immigration, like sanctuary cities. Of course, that's part of it. And just over half of California, what about the wildfires? What about the power outages? What about the cell phone towers being shut off also on people living in those areas where the fires were potentially threatening? Okay. Uh, What about the property tax? What about the bureaucracy that you can't even rebuild uh, for four years and all the permits and the taxes? I mean, all of this has caused the people of California to say, what is going on in one of the most beautiful states in America? But anyway, former California Richard and Judy Stark have no regrets, they said, of leaving their Modesta, California home, towing a U-Haul trailer with their Volkswagen SUV, 1,300 miles. They're going to go live in Amarillo, Texas. And after finding the website Conservative Move, The Starks put their home up for sale and around six months ago bought a newly constructed three-bedroom home in a suburb of McKinney, Texas for around $300,000. According to Stark, a similar home in California would cost you twice as much. We're moving to the redder pastures, said said the 71-year-old. We're getting with people who believe in the same political agenda that we do. America first, America first, and law and order. According to the new Census Bureau migration data from 2018, 691,000 Californians have left the state last year. In other words, the census is saying that almost 700,000 people have all left the state of California and moved to other states. That's it's not going up, it's going down in home ownership or transfers from other states. Whether people moving in compared to people moving out, it was a deficit of almost 700,000 people. Now, (coughs) where are they going? Well, they're going to Texas. 86,000 went to Texas. Uh, 68,516 went to Arizona. 55,467 went to Washington State. 50,700 went next door to Nevada. 43,000 moved up to Oregon, and the, the number goes on and on. But Texas is where they want to go. Texas is the largest net game from California. Um, and so the greatest ratio of ins and outs, uh, it's unbelievable. Also, Idaho received quite a few people. And um, so you're seeing a an exodus, you know, remember the great gold rush of 1849. Well, now it's the great exodus of 2019. We will continue to keep an eye on it um, because California is a beautiful, beautiful state, beautiful weather. San Diego is absolutely gorgeous. It doesn't even get any better than that hardly. I mean, the whole state is gorgeous. It's just quite amazing that some of the stuff that's going on. But let's keep an eye on it. Let's keep an eye on it because uh, look at this. Somebody's saying I'm I'm, I'm watching. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. It's three o'clock in the morning. Good morning, everybody. You can do some push-ups before breakfast, folks. Get your coffee. Everybody, calm down out there. Coffee. Well, that sounds good. I've already had three cups of uh, Israeli coffee, and actually, pretty good here in Tel Aviv. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not compared to mine, though. But not bad. Okay. Um. I don't mean that in any negative way. I'm just being honest. Again, speaking truth here, guys. We're speaking a lot of truth here. Let me tell you what else is going on, though. For those of you who just arrived, we do have a serious situation with 
most dangerous fault lines in America. We went through the top five. I'm not going to read the entire report. I'm just going to tell you the top five. Here they go. The top five are real simple here. Number one, and this is the one the Lord told me to really pray about, is the Cascadia subduction zone. He even told me to tell people it is the most dangerous location in America and maybe on Earth, okay? Cascadia subduction zone up there in the North Pacific Northwest hasn't had a massive quake since the year 1700 on a major scale. It is over, over, overdue. And while that's going on, number two is, yes, the other one, New Madrid seismic zone that affects Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Illinois. It is, without a doubt, one of the most dangerous places in our nation. It has not had a major earthquake since the two mega quakes of 1811 and then 1812. So it is over, overdue um, in St. Louis, Memphis, Little Rock, Arkansas, all through that area. Now, number three is the Ramble seismic zone in Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York. Nobody ever talks about it, but according to the U.S. Geological Survey, it's the most dangerous uh, fault line in America. It's number three. Number four is California. And then number five is the Denali fault system. Alaska, okay? And of course, created a massive quake and oh yeah it could be due again number six and andrea's fault california due and uh affects major uh so <clears throat> we're all keeping an eye on that one because that one certainly is major due and there's more okay so believe me there we're living in the end times <clears throat> the bible says there'll be signs in the sun the moon the stars the stress of nations with perplexity the sea the waves will be roaring men's hearts will fail them for fear for th- looking upon Things come upon the earth, and the powers of heaven will be shaken. So there's some unbelievable events coming uh, in these last days. Um, it's just a matter of time. And, you know, a lot of times, I can tell you, here in Israel, it's been very peaceful. Very peaceful. It's my tenth time to Israel, and it's the most calm, peaceful. And I've seen, I observed things I never saw before. And I'm just amazed by it. I quietly observed it. I haven't said anything. I just see it. I realize there's some serious, not serious in a negative way, but definite changes taking place. And I think it's truly leading us to these. Um, Yeah, uh, Steve Quayle is very concerned about it. Uh, That's right. Roxy's right. Matter of fact, Steve Quayle called me when I did a video a few months ago and said that the Lord had showed me that Cascadia subduction zone was the most dangerous uh, fault line in America. And uh, and I ho- did a whole video on it. And, of course, the, the science also is backing this up, too. But I did a whole thing on it simply because of uh, what the Lord showed me. And uh, Steve Quayle called me, called me and said, Pastor, you're absolutely right. I've been studying it now, and I've been f- flying over it and getting all kinds of footage and preparing that this is one of the most dangerous places in America, and and uh, he said you're on, you're absolutely 100% correct. Well, I said, well, the Lord showed it to me that it was very, 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 very uh, dangerous situation up there, and to, and to go ahead and warn the people. At <clears> the <throat> same time, the New Madrid is also an area they have to keep an eye on, and uh, so we'll be holding a conference uh, in that area soon. In May of next year, we'll let you know exactly where and what date, okay? And then you can get your tickets and be ready for that one. It is the second part of our Cincinnati conference last year, or this year, I should say, back in April, late April, we had a conference called The Heavens Are Shaking. No, it was in May. It was in May. The Heavens Were Shaking. Uh, and, of course, Jesus said it this way. There'll be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, Men's hearts will fail them for fear, for looking after those things coming upon the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Then shall we see the sign. Then shall we see the Son of Man even coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to uh, come to pass, he said, look up, lift up your head, your redemption draweth nigh. Now, let me just tell you right now. Meanwhile, the safest place on earth is probably right where I'm sitting 
in Israel. Believe it or not, there's a peace coming. There's a peace coming. It's temporary, but there's a peace process in play. And for, the, for a period of time, <coughs> there will be a change taking place. Uh, so keep that in mind. If some of you are thinking about going to the Holy Land, uh, this would be the ideal time. I can tell you from what I've seen, and I'll share more about that. This is the ideal time to plan the next couple years to make that trip to the Holy Land. Okay? Now let me say to all of you who aren't saved, you're running, we're running out of time. When you take a look at the big picture, we're running out of time. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And so if you're out there, and you might say, well, Pastor, I, I, uh, look, I'm going to ask you. I picked up a little, they, a little bit of uh, mustard seed. You take dry, when the mustard seed gets real dry and then you open it up, it is so small, folks, you can barely hold it in your finger. The mustard seed is the smallest seed on earth. Yet Jesus said, if you have the faith of a grain of mustard seed, you could say to a mountain, be moved and cast into the sea and it shall be done. In other words, it, you might say, Pastor, I don't know everything about the Bible. I don't know about everything going on. But, and so I'm, I'm thinking, how do I get saved? Or is, is, is Christ truly the Messiah? Let me just say to you quickly, if you have this much faith, this faith of a tiny mustard seed. If you believe that, just at least that much that Jesus could be, and that Jesus is the Son of God. And if you're willing, you don't have to know everything else about the Bible. You don't need to know everything about all the religions and all the traditions and all the denominations. But if you need, if you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and you, above any other prophet or messiah or false god that's ever been created or dreamed up or proclaimed by man you're willing to ask him into your heart if you believe just that much you can be saved the mountains of your life can move satan can be rebuked and set down the clutches of sin can be released from you the blood of jesus christ can cleanse your soul the shackles and chains of sin can be broken off and you can be released from the spirit of darkness today in Jesus' name, right now. Would you pray? I want you to type right now, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I'm going to play us a song. I'm not going to talk much about it. I seen a river. I was up, in the, uh, up near the Springs of Dan. And I filmed some of it, and I'm going to put. I'm going to post the video here in a few minutes on YouTube. And I saw this beautiful, clear. It's the clearest water in the world, maybe. The Springs of Dan, unbelievably cool water, and it's beautiful flowing, and it flows down, and it and it just it's an amazing springs. I stand up there and think about it. Jesus said, "I am the water of life." If any man would come thirst and drink of me, he'll never thirst again. Come and drink of the water of life freely. I'm going to play a song right now. I sang on my CD called The Journey. It's called There Is a River. And I want you to come and I want you to find out what it means to truly have the joy of the Lord. During this song, just type, I want to be saved. I want to be saved. And I will pray with you in just a moment. Till the night.
You know a dream is like a river Ever changing as it flows And the dreamer's just a vessel Must follow where it goes Trying to learn from what's behind you Never knowing what's in store Makes each day a constant battle Just to stay between the shore And I will sail my vessel Till the river runs dry Like a bird upon the wind These waters are my sky I'll never reach my destination If I never try So I will sail my vessel Till the river runs dry Too many times we stand aside And let the water slip away Till we put off till tomorrow What's now become today So don't you sit upon the shoreline And say you're satisfied The river runs dry Like a bird upon the wind These waters are my sky I'll never reach my destination If I never try So I will sail my vessel Till the river runs dry There's bound to be rough water and I know I'll take some falls But with the good Lord as my captain I can make it through them all Sail my vessel Till the river runs dry Like a bird upon the wind These waters are my sky I'll never reach my destination If I never try so I Sail my vessel till the river runs dry. No, I will sail my vessel till the river runs dry. River runs dry. River runs dry. River runs dry beautiful song really uh, we got two people that want to be saved there's people there's also another individual said that wants to rededicate repent rededicate i want to pray with you i know it's three o'clock in the morning or four o'clock in the morning or whatever it is on the east coast in america but people are watching all over the world build the night stunning me let's pray father in the name of jesus i want to repent of my sins i want to make things right i I have just enough faith, Lord. Maybe it isn't much, but I got enough, just enough to call upon the name of Jesus Christ to save me, to set me free. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be cleansed in my soul. I want to be washed in the precious blood of the Lamb of God. I'm repenting of my sins, Lord. I'm confessing my sins to God, and I'm calling Upon the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Son of the living God, the Savior of the world, the Messiah. Lord, I'm calling upon your name to save me and set me free and to break the chains that bind my soul and to put my feet on a solid rock, Lord, because I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe and I receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe and I repent and I rededicate 
my life to you, Lord. I believe in the Son of God. I believe Christ died on the cross for my sins, that Jesus was buried and that he rose again. I believe he ascended into heaven and that one day he's coming back again soon and very soon and I want to be ready. So right here, right now, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, 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 healed, delivered, set free, born again. Saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus, saved in Jesus' precious name. Praise God and praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm so glad for you. Those of you who got saved and rededicated, I'm so happy for you. We love you. We want to say welcome to the family of God. Your names have been written in the Lamb's Book of Life. The angels are rejoicing in heaven for you today. I want to encourage you to get baptized, to find a pastor or a church or a Messianic congregation somewhere, and <clears throat> tell them you got saved and you want to be baptized. Praise the Lord. Amen and amen. And uh, if you need anything, like if you need a free Bible, we'll send it to you. Or if you're sick and need a prayer cloth, we'll anoint it with oil and pray over it. If somebody's very, very ill, and I mean, you know, we need to get a blanket to them, maybe maybe a cancer, a, a brain tumor, or a uh, heart attack, there's so many things. Uh, we will send a, a blanket to people for free. We'll anoint it with oil and pray over it. Uh, they're just uh, chemo caps for people going through chemotherapy. Those are free. We'll pray over those. We'll send them to people for free. We'll pay the postage to get it to everybody. And uh, we just want to do the right things. I, my, our ministry, Sister Heidi and I, is to help lead people to Christ and to help the sick be healed and to help the orphans in India and in Pakistan. And, uh, and now we're even helping uh, 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 orphans in Romania. We also want to help spread the gospel all over the world uh, with our internet ministry and our television ministry that now is really reaching across the nation. Really, we need uh, to just keep praying one for another for this great time we're living in. We're running out of time. You know, and in bringing people to the Holy Land is another important thing that uh, changed my life. When Dr. Sumrall brought me uh, here to Israel in 1996, and then he, there was 500 of us, and he prophesied over me, called three of us out of the crowd, and laid his hands on us, and prophesied on all three of us. <coughs> and uh, I don't know what all he prophesied to those other two gentlemen, but I know for me, he prophesied that... Uh, there would be a ministry rise up that would touch the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ and that many people would be saved in many nations of the world. I had no idea how that could happen. I'm just a country preacher from the cornfields of Indiana. I'm just a humble man. And uh, coming from a very poor family, I have no idea how that can happen. But God, with God, all things are possible. If you'd like to help us, please do that. Go to our website at paulbegleyprophecy.com. I know there's only 174 of us watching right now. But uh, if you'd like to go and give, please do it. You know you're touching somebody's life. You're helping somebody get saved. You're helping somebody get healed. And, oh, by the way, you're being blessed yourself. So while I'm standing here in the Holy Land, if you'd like to give, please just go to my website right now, paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. And I want to thank you all for that. And, and with that, I'm going to play a song before I close. I mean, I'm just going to do that. Let's uh, play a song while you're giving, okay? And here it is. I was walking home from school on a cold and winter day Took a shortcut through the woods and I lost my way It was getting late and I was scared and alone Then a kind old man took me by the hand and he led me home 
Mama couldn't see him, but she was standing there. I knew in my heart he was an answer to my prayer. Bless you, Maggie. In our darkest hour, show us how to live. They teach us how to give, to guide us with the light of love. When life held troubled times, had me down on my knees. Always been someone to come and comfort me. A kind word from a stranger to lend a helping hand. A phone call from a friend just to say I understand. Ain't it kind of funny in the dark end of the road? Someone lit the way. With just a single ray of hope I believe there are angels among us Sent down to us from somewhere out of love They come to well, you Maggie, that's when you're in your darkest hours They show us how to live they teach us how to give and guide us with the light of love. They wear so many faces, show up in the strangest places, grace us with their mercy in our time of need. Guys, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this little wake up call. It is 4 09 a.m. Eastern Time back home in, in America, and uh, it is 11 09 a.m. here in Tel Aviv in Israel. Now, I'm gonna have to be rolling, I've got a lot of work to do. I've got to go do some filming and uh, different locations, <clears throat> and uh, gonna be a very, very busy day as we continue our journey and our work here in the land of Israel. We'll be getting some uh, some footage from different locations and some teachings that will be ultimately seen on our television show. And so uh, pray for us. Also, we've got some great meetings coming up with some of the leading Bible scholars of the world. So some of the things I've observed, it's been good. I've been here a week now or 10 days, whatever it's been, observing what, a, a, you know, unbelievable changes that are going on here. And the and the different and spirit and anointing that's here. One of the most peaceful, peaceful anointings I've ever felt. And I, I know not everybody's doing the right thing in Israel, like just like not everybody's doing the right thing in America. But there's a there's a peace. There's something coming. So this is all part of, I think, um, prophecy of the last days. Study on that. We're in the end times. The King of Kings is coming. Are you saved? I'll be back with more next time right here on The Coming Apocalypse. Thank you for your offerings and your tithe. And if you have uh, getting one of our DVDs or something, please do that. You will be blessed and highly favored. God bless all of you. Are you serious? What? What? Do you guys got any coffee? 
because I need some coffee. Bad.